Hello everyone. Today's verse of day is 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ may rest upon me. This is the Apostle Paul talking. And he's, and he's saying that, that Jesus told him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. What I want to talk about today is how you don't have to be an expert in something to speak about it when you're walking with the Lord. You do not have to have a perfect life to talk about a perfect life. When you're walking with the Lord, you do not have to be married to talk about what you know marriage is to be about when walking with the Lord. The Lord, the Bible, is all you need, and your power comes from Him. In your weakness, you gain new strength. But first, let me talk about Apostle Paul because. He's one of my favorite people in the Bible. I, I just love the fact it's it's crazy to think that someone who was so as a Pharisee, he was so knowledgeable in just killing so many Christians at a point. Thousands of Christians being killed in the name of Saul, Shaul of Tarsus. And later, Paul repents from all that he's still he's still to them known as Shao. it's not like when he became a christian and became paul that's not how it works that that's what some people believe that's not how it works he was still Shao tarsus to some but paul repented of that and the lord used him and and, and blessed him in so much revelation and things so when we read this in second corinthians 12 7 through 10 so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh. He says a thorn was given me in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn was. No one knows what that thorn is that, that Paul's talking about. And I like it like that because it makes us relate. What thorn is in our flesh? What keeps us humble? What keeps us from boasting? As we do things for the Lord, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. We can get become conceited as we do things for God. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. So, yes, I talk about this because, you know, before I was married, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I needed in a spouse, and I knew how to, to get a spouse. The Lord showed me. In, in the word of God, it, it showed me. And I talked about how I was going to get a spouse. And I talked about what I need. And I talked about to the people that I was courting. The person at a time, because I do one at a time, the person I, at a time that I was courting, I would let them know and see where they stood. A road map was set. I could speak upon it before it happened. Because I had the word of God and I had faith. You don't have to be an expert in something to talk about it. You do not have to experience every situation to talk about it. I talk to you about afterlife. I talk to you about death. Yet I've never experienced death. I've never experienced afterlife. And some things I won't ever experience. And that's a department, departure from God going to hell I will not experience that but I could talk to you about it just like a social worker can talk to you about how to get away from addiction such as drugs 
alcohol, narcotics, and things of like. They haven't experienced every drug. They haven't been in every situation, but they can talk to it. There's a thing that happens every once in a while. At my old job, we had a building. And it's a beautiful building. But as we got new people in, I'd always ask them, hey, when you walk into this building, let us know what's wrong with it. Please tell us. And they're like, I haven't been there very long. I'm like, you haven't been there very long is why we need you to let us know what is wrong with it. Because we got old eyes. We come in here, there could be water coming from the ceiling and we stop seeing it. We don't even realize that the water is dripping. But you, a new worker, you see this and, and you can spot all the little things, the idi idiosyncrasies that are wrong with it. Sometimes a person who is unexperienced, sometimes someone who is new, has new insights into things. And remember, don't ever doubt yourself because you're made in imagio dei, in the image of God. And God ain't stupid. So if you're made in God's image, you ain't stupid either. As Acts 2.17 says, And in the last days there shall be, God declares, and that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In day, those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, they shall edify, they shall build up, they shall encourage, admonish, supplicate, implicate, they shall console, they shall comfort in the last days, in the last days. Young people, old people, daughters, men, all the Lord's people shall build up, edify, encourage, console, admonish in the last days. And they don't have to be perfectly experienced in all of those things. They just have to know God and know his word. That's what they need. That's what they need. You do not have to be an expert. If you, if the Lord is giving you a tasking to do, trust him. Trust him. Be confident in him. Because sometimes he chooses you. Why? Why? When we go back to what Paul says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. If you don't know, if you don't think you know everything, perfect. God's power is made perfect in weakness, in your weakness. He needs you to be a vessel. He needs you to be open to let him rule and him reign in you. Isaiah 40, 29, 31 says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even you shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You'll fly through things when you have became through your weakness. And the Lord uses his strength to guide you. You shall mount up with wings like eagles. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint when the Lord's able to use you. When you understand, hey, he's going to do this thing. He's going to do this thing. And Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Any given Sunday, any given Sunday, the Lord can use exactly you to get his will done. Ain't got to be the most experienced. Ain't got to be look a certain way or be a certain way. His power is made perfect in weakness. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for doing what you do, Father. Thank you for gifting when you gift and how you gift or who you want to gift. And thank you for being God. We love you, Lord. May many be saved. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.